I'm not even going to welcome you to this toasted sandwich with Marmite on it. All I'm going to do is just get straight into painting Pete, my best friend. Today I'm going to be painting a quarter scale Spider-Man bust from 3D Wicked. The link for Wicked is down in the description below. Please be sure to check them out and let them know that I sent you. I had already primed and prepped all the parts that I needed for this video. And in order to save some of your boredom, I've cut out some of the more boring and tedious bits of the job. So you'll see me prep and do certain things and then I'll speed it up or omit certain parts that are not really interesting to watch. On this base you can see me using metallic paints and standard matte colours. This is going to be a good contrast between the paints and their finishes when we're done with the model. I filled panel lines with washes and I used tints over some of the blues. I made the crazy decision to paint all the hexagons all by hand. Having printed this part in FDM and struggling with my FDM machine, I didn't actually have great raised parts for me to follow, so all of this had to be done on a nearly flat surface, by hand, it took hours. One of the best tips I can give you for doing something like this though, is get yourself into a rhythm, um, set yourself down, make sure you're comfortable, and just prepare for the long haul. This took me almost a full day just to do most of these hexagons. When you're trying to paint lines with paint, I find the best thing you can do to make that paint flow is probably to add something like an airbrush medium. Water will work if you don't have airbrush medium, but airbrush medium will help make it flow a lot more and continually keep adding that to your paint. You can see me tidying up the edges and the rim around the bottom here. This is just to help get my eye in and make sure that what I'm thinking about as the plan is actually working out in real life. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, so it's good to check these things. Then I'll also put the parts together and just check how they fit with each other and how their colors and volumes work amongst each other, just to make sure that I've got all the correct lights in the right places. Wicked, if you're listening to me, please, if you do a tripled up layer of logos like this in the future, please make it on three separate layers so it's easier to paint. Getting my brush in between those spider's legs is gonna be the death of me. So I started off with the Zenithal highlight on the actual Spidey himself. I painted a dark red at the bottom and I painted a light red at the top. So I aimed the airbrush from the bottom with a dark red and you can see me coming back in over the top of that with a progressively lighter red. Not going white into red, I go into orange so that my highest point is orange which you can see here in the videos that I'm showing. Preparing my wet palette from Army Painter, I'm going to start painting the blue into this guy. This was something new for me, normally I would mask all of these parts out and I would airbrush them straight in. It is a little bit quicker to paint with the airbrush, however, masking takes a long time to make sure that it's perfect. And I would say that doing it this way was a bit quicker for me. It's something new, I decided to paint bravely and painting bravely means that no mask and I'm going in with the airbrush and I airbrushed all those shadows and highlights in without even masking the model. It was really stressful while I was doing it but the more I did it the more I could see that it was actually easy enough to do for myself. I'm obviously got into a level where I'm trusting of my airbrush now. Not too much but I will take it a little bit further in future. Doing the suit lines on Spidey is pretty straightforward. Make sure that the paint is flowing. I used a satin black for this. Later on I'll come back and I'll put a gloss over the top of this just to separate the textures of shiny lining of the suit and the matte of the suit itself. I'm using a wash, a blue wash here. I'm just going into all the recesses of the lining in the blue parts of the suit. Again to help differentiate those lines from the main portion of the suit. Back into the black lining again of his suit. This is the kind of thing that you cannot hide from, but it takes its time. You just sit down, watch some YouTube, and just get on with it, really. The way I'll paint things like this is I'll paint the top flat surface first, and then I'll come back later and I'll tilt the brush to make sure that I can get the edges right up to the side of the model. Um, this is probably the most important part of making sure it looks tidy. If you just did the top, you'd have the under color on the side of it and that wouldn't make it look as neat as it would look if you had to go over the edge of that part as well. In my infinite wisdom and excitement of painting without a mask, I had painted over Spidey's emblem on his back, which in hindsight was probably a bit of a waste of time, but I'll come back in and I'll just paint that back on again. Going back into working on the logo for this Spider-Man, 
This was something I wanted to prepare so far because I wanted that white of that writing to stand out super, super strong. So I wanted to make sure that that white base was down, that later on when I came back to this, I'd be working off of a much stronger base. So my whites would be super, super white. This will help contrast. It will help push the logo forward and push it out against the background, which is Spidey in this instance. Again, you can see me making sure that I get all the way around the edge of those letters and being as super tight as I can. Also, Wicked, please make these on separate layers for me in future. So now for probably the most difficult part of doing Spider-Man. As much as I love Spider-Man and as much as I love painting Spider-Man, doing the lines on Spider-Man is one of the most difficult things you can possibly do. It takes one slip of the brush and you might have to cover up a whole area of, of paint that you've completely messed up and start again which I obviously don't want to be doing when I'm backed up with so much work on my table. So once again, the biggest tip I can give you for something like this is to make sure that you're using some kind of a flow aid. It helps that you start off with a paint that already flows quite well before flow aid. But if you've got a paint that doesn't flow as well, you can add in an airbrush medium or water if you can't get yourself airbrush medium, and this will help to make sure that the paint flows. Make sure to add water, make sure you're using a wet palette, make sure that your paint itself is quite liquid, but not too wet because you obviously don't want to touch the model and have paint just run straight off of the brush. Um, that would be a totally different style of painting. In this instance, I went with a solid painted line as opposed to using a panel line or a pin line or even a wash for this case. But I think you could totally get away with using a dark red shade and using that in the lines as well. Perhaps a dark red and a dark earth sort of brown shade would save you from seeing the mistakes if you made any but also still give you the same effect of the lines in his suit this was another thing i sat down i put youtube on i had many videos going and i spent a whole day doing just the lines on the suit i'm using my favorite super thick super glue and i'm gonna glue on pete's head this sculpt does come with multiple heads but I'm not interested in multiple heads. I'm going straight with Pete's head this time. This is going to be how I display him and I'm never going to change him. I previously did a video on how I painted Pete's face. You can find that in the top corner right now. I needed to come back into that portrait though as I had not completed painting his hair. All that was left to do was to do a dry brush on the tips of the hair just catching where the light comes from. Not too much for Pete's hair. I don't want to overdo and take away from the face and the amount of detail that's in the lines and the textures on the rest of the body. And coming back to the last thing that took me the most amount of time painting this logo was probably the most difficult thing that i've done in a while trying to get my brush into such awkward places was really really difficult not only that but making sure that not only did i have to fit my brush into a small space i needed to try and blend colors as well i needed to try and make a blend or a shade from dark to light which proved to be difficult. So I tried a new technique, something that I had seen in a video on YouTube. And basically what it is, is stippling the paint. And if you stipple the paint one layer over another, because the layers are thin enough, it slowly builds up and creates sort of an illusion of a blend. So using this technique, I painted the spider to have a gradient from the tips of the feet down to the center where it looked like the spider was going lighter towards the light source. You can see how many times I have to work over this gradient area. This is just trying to make sure that the gradient really worked out. Using this stippling technique is actually pretty good. I think I'll make a future video on how I use this technique and how you may be able to use this technique for yourself in the future. Every now and then you'll see me going back and forth, touching up and just tidying everything as I went along it was a very difficult section of the model to paint this again took me another full day to paint and that's the end of that i'd like to say thank you to our newest patreon member scott thompson thank you so much for your guys support it really truly does help the channel Either you enjoyed that video or you didn't. If you did, click like and consider subscribing. 
We also have a Patreon you can subscribe to as well. I'd also like to thank these people here for subscribing to Patreon and helping fund the videos individually. If you'd like to be as cool as these people, look for the link for Patreon down below. Once again, thanks for watching, and everybody here knows exactly what you need to do if you didn't like that video. Just f*** off. Wouldn't it be funny if I didn't even press record? <laughs>